If you spend even a few minutes with an active voiceover user, you'll learn two things very quickly. They are remarkably adept at navigating around user interfaces, and they also often set reading speed extremely fast, way faster than you and I would even think about using. Now, it's important to take both these things into account when we're designing our UI. These users aren't just trying voiceover out of curiosity, but they're instead voiceover power users who rely on it to access your app. As a result, it's important we ensure our UI removes as much clutter as possible so users can navigate through it quickly and not have to listen to voiceover reading unhelpful descriptions. Now, beyond setting labels and hints, there are several ways we can control what voiceover reads out. And there are three in particular I wanna focus on here. First, marking images as being unimportant for voiceover. Second, hiding views from the whole accessibility system. And third, grouping several views as one. Now, all of these are simple changes to make, but they result in a big improvement. For example, we can tell SwiftUI that a particular image is just there to make the UI look better by using the image decorative initializer. Now, whether it's a simple bullet point or an animation of your app's mascot character running around, it doesn't actually convey any information. And so image decorative tells SwiftUI it should be ignored by voiceover. For example, we might say image decorative character, like that. Now, for all views, images or otherwise, you can get the same result using the accessibility hidden modifier, which makes any view completely invisible to the accessibility system. For example, if we had a regular image here, image just dot character like that, and then said dot accessibility hidden, true, then we'll get the same result. Now, obviously you should only use this if the view in question really does add nothing at all. If you place the view off screen, for example, so it wasn't currently visible to users, you should mark it inaccessible to voiceover too. The last way to hide content from voiceover is through grouping, which lets us control how system reads out several views that are related. As an example, we can make a layout like this. We'll do a VStack and say, text, your score is, and then text 1000 with a font of title. Now, VoiceOver will see that as two unrelated text views, and so it will either read your score is, or a thousand, depending on what the user has selected. Both of those are unhelpful, which is where the accessibility element children modifier comes in. We can apply it to a parent view and ask us to combine children together into a single accessibility element. For example, we could make some code here that will cause both text views to be read together with a short pause between them. We'll say here, our VStack is itself one accessibility element with children being dot combine. And that works really well when our child views contain separate information. But in our case, the children should really be read together as a single entity. So the better solution here is to say, actually, yes, one element's fine, but children ignore, ignore these two text views entirely so they're invisible to voiceover and then provide a custom label to the parent. Like this, accessibility label uh, here is your score is 1000. Now it's worth trying both of those to see how they differ in practice. Using dot combine adds a pause between the two pieces of text because they aren't necessarily designed to be read together. On the other hand, using ignore and a custom label means the text is read all at once and is much more natural. I should say, a tip for you here, ignore is the default parameter for children. So you get the same result as this line of code here just by saying it is one accessibility element.